Today, we're going to be doing a review of the first book in A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones. This one, uh, I've said this before, this is a little bit different to what I normally read. It's a bit more grim, dark, um, than the kind of lighter heart, light-hearted stff I normally read. They're light-hearted. A bit more um, in terms of some of the themes, but uh, I actually really enjoyed this one. Before we get into the video, make sure to do the usual stuff of liking and subscribing if you like the content you see here, and let's get into the video. So, as I said a minute ago, this isn't really a kind of genre I read. It's more grim dark, um, with a lot more kind of, uh, what, what, what's it like, m more R-rated in terms of some of the stuff you see in this. Uh, which actually I didn't mind. I thought I would be a bit uh, put off by it, but it's actually not too bad. I have, however, seen the TV show already, um, so I don't know whether that's going to play a part in this review. I'll try and be as unbiased as possible. I like how this one has a different kind of take on fantasy. In a way, it's both. It's a bit more anti-fantasy. So you take the kind of com. He take well. George R. R. Martin takes a lot of the common tropes and tries to like twist them on their head in a way. And I really like the, that kind of idea. And it's something that's a bit different to what I've normally been reading. And it's just quite refreshing to be able to see this done. The book has quite a few memorable characters. Uh, the main standout one here is Ned Stark. He's the character you follow throughout this book. And he's got this very like good sense of moral uh, mores. And he's one of the kind of only um, morally good you could say, characters, uh, the rest are very grey, and I think that's the point of this. Everyone has got their own agenda, everyone's trying to do things for their own selfish reasons, and this is a man stuck in the middle of all of this. On the flip side, of, well, not the flip side, but on the other side of the story, you've got Daenerys, who is a kind of, if you don't know already, Daenerys is the kind of uh, she's a Targaryen, which means she's the queen. She's kind of like the heir to the throne that what that um, that would have happened, except her father was killed when he was king, because uh, he was a, like a bloodthirsty conqueror, and um, and she's now far away from the kind of main center of the story. And what I like about this is that she is slowly, well, well it's one of these things that. Do, this book does well is it sh has a kind of sense of progression without it directly showing you obviously you have the kind of main plot but the series as a whole you can see where it's going because you've got the nearest slowly moving closer and closer back to the mainland back to try and claim the th her throne back and you just have this sense of progression which you don't normally like like for example um take lord of the rings you may not see there's a kind of progression towards the plot. Yes, they're getting... But if you look at the map, you can see they're getting closer and closer to the end goal. And that's what's happening with Daenerys here. She's slowly getting closer and closer. And well, she doesn't get too far in this book, but you can see that she's moving in the gen that general direction. And um, it's just setting you up, promising you that something's going to happen. Another great character in this is Tyrion. He's this, like... Very well written, clever character, and it's not. It doesn't fall apart like some kind of things do. You kind of portray a character to be more superior in terms of their intellect, and you have the common tropes of making them. Uh, well, you see it in movies where they have a Rubik's cube or something, and it's just like a kind of. It doesn't make them any more intelligent, but the way Tyrion is written, uh, is. Perfect. I really like this character. He himself is kind of morally grey, uh, but you kind of understand his motives a little bit um, and some of the things he does. So it's kind of a weird one because you're rooting for some characters who are against others, um, but you're kind of rooting for both in a way. And the final kind of morally good character you've got is Jon Snow. He is amazing. I really like him. Uh, he kind of has a bit of an arc in this one. Um, 
but he's just lovable. Uh, you got you can't like you can't hate Jon Snow. Yes, he, I think some people say he's kind of like in a way morally bland because he's like n like good all the time, and some decisions he makes is because he's trying to be a good person, but. I like that in a story like this. I need a kind of moral center sometimes. Otherwise, I feel plot gets lost and I hate... So, like, liking some characters but hating the others and it gets a bit all out of control. I don't know what to do. In terms of the plot, I really like this one. This one has a lot of different viewpoints and it manages to bounce between each one um, quite well and kind of basically just keep the ball bouncing uh, from one person to another slowly getting faster and faster in the plot, building up, adding all the bits and pieces until uh, the kind of last third of the book or last quarter of the book, where it's just bang, 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 bang. Such good stuff going on here. I can't really say much more without giving away some spoilers, but um, we can talk spoilers in a second. Uh, but this one does this in such a good way on such a larger scale, and it doesn't get lost in the kind of nitty gritty of the world building um it, it's a very character focused story and i really like that so let's talk spoilers i really like this one it does something that game of thrones is known for doing uh, if even if you haven't re read the books or seen the series you've probably heard of the fact that this one will kill off your favorite characters ned stark um yeah, he dies at the end, and you'd be you'd been following him for the entirety of this book. You were seeing him getting closer and closer to his goal of trying to work out what's going on, how the last hand died, and what this whole thing's going on. And as soon as he works it out, he knows what's happening. That's it. They he gets captured, and they kill him. And that's just another way of showing that George R. R. Martin like knows how to set the stakes. You read this book and you're like, oh, he's just killing off one of the main characters that you've been following for this book. The others are also in danger. So now when you read scenes, you are aware of how like unstable each person's situation is and how close they can easily just be killed off. Like I said, this one works as kind of anti-fantasy. So you've got a few kind of tropes that have been uh, twisted. So you've got the kind of, well, the, the dwarfish, like ugly... I don't know, but this is how he's described, like an ugly kind of character. And he's actually kind of intelligent and quite clever. And um, But also, one of the main ones you've got is kind of the Prince Charming. And uh, you've got, that's Jamie Lannister. And you have his kind of incestual stuff, as well as, literally, at the beginning, he pushes the kind of, uh, kind of kid king. That's what you could... I don't really know how you do uh, Pushes him out the window. He then is now a cripple. And the kind of Prince Charming is now labelled as a, kind of a bad person. On top of that, you've kind of got the, uh, it's not really a trope, but it's this whole idea of people having plot armour and being very difficult, like some of the, like being able to survive through a lot more than they should be able to. And George R. R. Martin kind of does away with that, uh, with kind of killing of Ned Stark and uh, some of the other characters as well. And it's just got a nice cast of characters. And like I said, it is very character focused. And I really like that because of this. And yeah, um, I really enjoyed this one. It's a great, great book, obviously, because it's so popular at the minute. Yeah. But um, uh, the, like I've said before, there is like a few issues, just one issue I have, not with the book, but just the fact that people hate on the series. And I don't want to get into that. I don't think it was done very well on the finale. Not well at all, but the series itself has not finished yet. I say the series, the books haven't finished yet. So I do recommend just giving them a go and seeing if you enjoy them because the first books are very good. I'm currently reading the second one, so I'll get a review out for that one soon. And yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure to do the usual stuff of liking and subscribing if you like this content. And if you want another review to see, I will leave one either side of me for my Eye of the World review for the Wheel of Time first book. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.